So I'm talking about um, automated number plate recognition or automated number plate reader systems. Um, yeah. Who am I? I'm McFly. The one or other has seen me on uh, earlier Balcons or other events like that. I uh, am a German who meanwhile lives in the Netherlands, um, in the nice city of Rotterdam. And I'm also active in the uh, awesome hackerspace Pixel Bar there. Uh, in the daytime, I work as a professional smart ass. Um, so, yeah. Okay, what is NPR? Uh, pretty easy, automated means uh, it's completely automated processing, so no humans involved. Uh, that's pretty important uh, on some details later because a lot of those decisions are really hard to make for computers. Number plates, well, Pretty much uh, everybody who of you who has a car uh, has one or two of them, um, and this for the talk focuses on uh, that detail and the recognition. Um, that's actually the tricky part of that. What is ANPR? I'm going to go to that uh, later a bit, but uh, in detail. But this basically shows it's a system to uh, read a number plate from a car and then make decision based on that. So, what's used for? Um, as said, I live in the Netherlands, and the Netherlands sees themselves sometimes very much in the future. So we, for example, uh, use the number plate for a lot of things. Um, the most direct thing you see is uh, directly the park enforcement by the city and uh, the parking enforcement by private people. The later thing is the stuff that got me actually in giving this talk. It's also used for uh, speed control um, and for law enforcement. So, parking enforcement, that's how a private system looks. Uh, you basically have a garage. When you drive in there, a computer will recognize your number plate. Uh, when you drive out there, it will recognize your number plate again. Based on that, you pay. Pretty straightforward concept. For the city, that looks a bit different. That is a, a, a parking enforcement car. It's a ton of uh, cameras on top that do precisely that, detect the number plates of cars parking in the area. Um, yeah, it's straightforward. When you go parking, you put your own number plate into one of those uh, parking things where you throw in the money. You also can't pay by cash anymore, but you pay by your card. You enter your number plate, you walk away. Uh, from time to time, those cars drive around, and they actually check who's parking where. And when you parked and haven't paid and see a car, uh, such a car driving past your car, you have roughly three minutes. Because that's the time that the city assumes it takes you from getting out of your car to get to the next box and pay. And the car that drives past doesn't know if you were just walking to get a parking ticket. So knowing those cars is pretty important. Speed control. Um, I don't know if that exists here. In the Netherlands, it becomes very, very common. Uh, basically, there is a place A where they recognize your number plate. There is a place at B where they're recognizing number plate. They know the distance between that. Based on the timestamps, they can tell you how fast you were. Pretty precise. The distances between A and B vary. Uh, the shortest I've seen is roughly 450 meters. The longest I've seen goes over nine kilometers. Uh, it's clear if you, for example, take a break or standing in a traffic jam on part of this part, the rest of that is speeding for free. Law enforcement. Does this translate? So that's at the border of the city. Rotterdam has an environmental zone, so only cars that fall under certain criteria are allowed to enter the city. And before they started this, which started on the 1st of January in 2017, they put up gigantic signs that uh, have read your number plate and that told you if you're in the future allowed to still go into the city with your car. This technology is also used for other things. So there's other number plate readers which are not very photogenic, so I don't have a proper picture from that because it's basically a camera on the bridge that also checks uh, your number plate and looks up in the database. It looks like things like, do you have a warrant? Or does the owner of the car have a warrant? Or did he pay his taxes? And they will use those bridges that are put up in quite a lot of places. Usually five kilometers behind the bridges, you have a group of motorbikes standing at the side of the road. That's the people that really want to talk to you. Done. 
Why do I care? Well, I live there. That's actually the house I'm living in. And you see at the bottom uh, that this, oh no, I clicked something. On the bottom, uh, or you can't really see it nicely, on the bottom is a bunch of garages and they write down when I drive into the garage and out of that. And privacy is not very well known concept in the Netherlands. So I got annoyed by that. Uh, I complained to privacy issues and uh, asked them several questions that in the age of GDPR you would possibly ask your whatever organization that stores some private data for you things about how long do you store the data? The question was, what do you mean? How long do you store the data? So when do you delete it? Delete? So it turns out all of this private data that they collect and deny it's private data. So uh, they, the whole GDPR discussion is ongoing. I'm not mentioning this in this talk, but it has huge impact on number plates. But basically the problem is they're storing the entering and leaving of the, of the garage forever. So I told them that they can't do that. They didn't really care. And so I start talking to the vendor. Mm. I'll not blame, blame, uh, name the vendor here. Um, the vendor basically said, don't worry, this is secure. <laughs> oh, what do you mean by secure? Yeah, this is secure. That's the only answer I got. On letters and written requests, they didn't answer at all, so I just called them in the office, and that's the only thing I got out of them. I did not have precisely the feeling that the person that was giving this answer did know what they're talking about. So January came around, my assignment as professional smart as ended, um, and I had uh, some time to play. Again, I uh, approached the company, tried to find somebody who knows what I'm talking about, and they were like, yeah, no, this is very secure. Uh, experts tried, believe us. All in all, not precisely the most convincing reaction you could get out of that. So. Let's take a bit apart. How does the system work? That's basically your entrance in front of a parking lot, in front of your door garages. Um, yeah. There's a magnetic coil under the ground. This magnetic coil detects a car. Has any one of you ever opened a gate with uh, something heavy made out of metal to, for example, get out the other way? Metal for Whatever, just like you know what I'm talking about here, right? There's a magnetic coil in the ground that uh, basically uh, detects if there is a heavy metal object on there. It works over a magnetic coil where they have a permanent magnetic field. Um, and when this field gets disturbed, the computer knows there's a car, right? So it gives a signal to a camera. This camera takes a picture and sends the result to a computer. This is infrared based and with a flashlight, so that's roughly how it looks. This is a side view from a more German car that I could find that gave a nice reflection on that on a British vehicle. The picture you get looks like this. This then gets thrown uh, to OCR, uh, so uh, recognition algorithms within the computer that tries to uh, extract out of this picture, the number plate, which doesn't look very weird, right? And co uh, correlates that in somewhat way with the database or an application or whatever they have behind that, that then says yay or nay. So how does the system also work? You take a fire extinguisher, uh, one that's made out of steel. Hold this over the uh, magnetic coil that disrupts the magnetic field. Um, <laughs> you're a car, gate opens. What should have happened is, well, I had a discussion with a friend who's a professor, and he basically said, well, if you see it this way, it's a protected area where you put the secret that gives you access to the protected area in clear text on the outside of the object that wants to get access to the, to the, the thing. So the only thing you need to do is 
wait for a number plate to drive by. That's your valid secret to get access to this area. Um, the proper way to have fixed that would have to be using those clickers, some proper kind of uh, keys, or if you go want to go full fancy, an RFID system, long-range RFID system would possibly also have done the trick. Number plates is really easy to fake. Yes? Uh, do you need to present a reflective surface to the camera, or this, can it be a sheet of paper? Um, that depends on the light. So just imagine these cameras are more or less on the ground, and imagine it's night, it's snowing, it's a really shitty view, it's winter. The systems still need to work because you don't want to stay outside and not be able to get in your garage. So it's very fault tolerant. Under good view, a normal sheet of paper works. Under bad view, I recommend something that's reflective. Uh, if you want to get something that's reflective, uh, go to a company that makes tops for trucks because they have those warning bands they put on the top, uh, on the truck, that the truck is better visible. And uh, it's actually defined how thick they are. And it's interesting the, that they're pretty much precisely as high or wide as a number plate is. So that's the best source of material. It's pretty cheap. This is how it looks. This is a picture with a bit good view. The upper one is made with masking tape. So when I tried to break this stuff in the beginning, I uh, was a bit uh, thinking this must be high complicated systems that want, need everything very precisely. The lower one is Sharpie. Um, that totally does it. And uh, after some trainings, I was able, because I had to draw a lot of number plates for this, um, after some trainings, I was able to, with a thick Sharpie, just draw, write the number in one go works. This system is really very fault tolerant <coughs> and everything that I told you that you have the special font, sense, font sets on the number plate that only those get recognized, that's all bullshit. That's by the way in most software that is either an, OS, OS, uh, an commercial OCR library or even some OS, uh, open source libraries uh, used in there. Here you can see it a bit better. Um, yeah. Gets in, and if you try to get it with the same number plate, does it let you know does the first card to leave? Depends on the system. Uh, you can configure that actually in your own system. Uh, it mostly get you usually start with the car can only be in, the, in there once, um, which is the commercial parking system. But you usually end with we don't care because otherwise you have to deal with all those people that do tailgating. And if you drive out when the door opens, because the car in front of you opened the door and you drive closely enough after that, the system will not get that you also left the garage and then deny you entry the next time. But people do that quite a lot. So usually the database get mo gets uh, mixed up over time and then it doesn't work properly anymore. And then they just switch off this feature and just say when the correct database is on the system, allow entry. Our system had exactly the same way. I tried 30 times with the same number, pl number plate to get in there, the system doesn't care. Like one minute later, neek, door open. So that worked. And <coughs> this is over scanning. So in the lower left at the corner, at the left side, you can't really see well the camera that guards the entrance. Um, surprisingly, exactly at the middle of the cross that's painted on there is the magnetic coil. So that was really easy to remember after I found it. I'm like, this can't be, but it was directly over the middle. But yeah, see it this way. Um, I'm a car. I want entrance. That's my number plate. And door opens. Yeah, it's like, that is like the moment where you're standing there because I was thinking about this for quite a while and I made all this fancy stuff and I went out for the first time and it immediately worked. So that is like, if you ever tried to hack something, you usually have to try 150,000 times until finally it works. And then you have something like this, you go there, works immediately. Question? I just remember the, there was recently a new XKCD comic that said, uh, 
nobody's going to stop a man running with a fire extinguisher. So I guess if you get in with a fire extinguisher, nobody's going to stop you because they're going to assume you're there to help. <laughs> the reference was to an XKCD where somebody said nobody's going to, or said nobody stops somebody with a fire extinguisher. So far, I can uh, I agree to that. That actually works uh, pretty well. So. So, I tweeted that. Uh, I don't have that many followers than quite a lot of other people here. So the reaction for me was pretty big, and I didn't expect uh, the feedback. I totally underestimated that. People that organize conferences start asking me if I want to make a talk out of that. Now, at that point, I'd really hoped that I just need to make this video, put it on YouTube, and all of those magic NPR systems just disappear because they are now known broken, right? Yeah, if, if that's ever your plan, let me tell you, that doesn't work. Uh, you need to actually give some talks and annoy people quite a lot about that. So, what else is there? Um, this is a fam famous picture from the internet. Um, I'm pretty sure everybody has seen that. Um, it's very nice, it's very impressive. It shows you how uh, SQL works, but in reality, that's uh, a, a bit long for those software and B, there is problems in there uh, actually re reading that because it goes around the curve. So I tried this. Didn't work at my house, didn't work at work, so I made this YouTube video and somebody was like to me like, oh shit, that works with our software. <laughs> so there is actually software where this works. Uh, it's a bit older. Um, if you ever look into the software, uh, the starts around 2000, those software to show up, um, but the biggest software on the market, I will not mention that because I didn't do any proper uh, disclosure. I was just like, what the fuck disclosure, basically? So I will not mention a vendor, but uh, the older version that I still use quite a lot um, works with Windows 2000 server and with MySQL for Windows version 3. And after I heard that, I was just like, yeah, there's no way that will not be broken. So, somebody told me that actually works in some configuration. What else? Multiple number plates. Reader doesn't work anymore. Because, just think about this, you take a picture, you throw it against the OCR library, there is a long string of stuff coming out of there, and the software behind that just says, uh, that's not what I wanted. Have you ever seen a truck in the front lately? Like in a gas station or so. You all recognize that a lot of trucks have number plates in the front. So not the normal number plate, but that's a bit small now, but you can possibly see the name of the driver's Uwe. So he got himself a number plate, put that in the window that says Uwe. Well, this one where it's a bit nicer to see, this truck is driven by Peter. Uh, his girlfriend or wife, that's not really clear out of the number plates, it's called Sylvia. Um, the real number itself, uh, down at the bottom, is not nicely visible because they made a warning sign mostly over that. Number plate readers, like automated number plate reader systems, don't deal well with that. If you just present them, well, more than a number plate, like a lot of different random text, usually not that good. What else is there? Colliding namespace. Does anyone get an idea where this goes? So, where did, where's this number plate from? Serbia. Serbia. You think? Because it's also a valid number plate for Italy. <laughs> this one. Depends. They started with three, but that starts. Where, who knows? Germany. Germany. This is Braunschweig. This is a blue Favi Golf. I think a four or five Golf. But in the Netherlands, it's a white Scania. So whoever of you ever wrote code when this same thing can mean multiple stuff, that doesn't work well. And there is a more prominent example. Because in the Netherlands, the royal family has the number plates AA and then a number. AA1 is the royal car. If you're from Germany in the city of Arlen, and get elected mayor to that city. You'll get a car with the number plate of Arlen, AA, and then the one for being the mayor. So this whole space is completely not collision-free. Uh, one number plate can uh, come from multiple countries. 
I gave this talk or an earlier version of a talk on the EMF camp and somebody walked up to me after the talk and says, yeah, there's some real problems you found there. And Heathrow, we're having the problem of the same number plate and two different cars roughly every two to three months. Like Heathrow, all the garages is logically just one garage, which has multiple entries and outcome because as you have to pay, the car can only be in the system once, so that doesn't really work. Recognizing the, the country code? The country code is not reflective. Okay. So if you remember the picture from the number plate I had before, it only sees the high reflective uh, or the reflective surfaces against the non-reflective surfaces. Um, on good exposure, you can even take a normal plastic foil uh, with high contrast. But in general, the answer to that is no, it doesn't. It's too small. The quality of those cameras behind there is usually shit. So what your smartphone has is usually better than what's in those solutions in there. Uh, yeah. But yeah, lead and char sets, right? Where's this number plate from? Over here, people would know, I guess. That's an old Russian number plate. It's still valid. What? Soviet Union. Soviet Union. That's Actually correct, but like I'm sparing you the jokes of all the other number plates. Uh, give it a look. You can see that for OCR software, not all of those number plates are precisely easy to read. Um, yeah, one of the problems with uh, the namespace of number plates. Root code analysis. What is this? This is a failure to identify that what you're having in front of you is actually um, user-generated input. If you're standing in front of the parking garage and nobody else is there and the camera is taking a picture of you, you have all the freedom in the world to just set a scenery. So that's basically what I did. Um, the developer assumed everything that's coming out of their OCR library will be really proper good data, and uh, also took that. There's other places where this happens. So, FX gave a talk about that on DEF CON 16, which is a while ago. That's barcodes. Same problem. Barcodes is user-generated input. Because even if barcodes usually mean numbers, if you have EAN, you can do quite a lot of stuff in there. Cross-site scriptings. Uh, what is this? Read it early on my number plate. Um, this is a bit long, but this is nice. Who of you does a lot with uh, Unix and Unix-related stuff and knows what this is? How, how, how would an attacker call that? Yeah, that's a reverse shell that you can just do with the barcode. Um, or if you want to be a bit more destructive, all that stuff. Sadly, that doesn't work with the number plate. Um, the, the yeah. Yes, I didn't took the no preserve route because I wanted to have a small barcode. I just assume it's not a very modern operating system. And I hope that enough shit got deleted uh, by that anyway. All of the stuff that you see in there is user generated input. Yes, credit card is user generated input. A smart card that you hold in front of a user is gen user generated input. Does anyone of you have a MyFair? MyFair 1K? <laughs> Very common, uh, very common smart card. Uh, the identifier is a number, right? Really good for, uh, for opening doors. Yeah. The, 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 the identifier of the uh, card is a number, right? And most applications just look for the number, which is the card identifier. It's not a number. It's a string. It's just by convention that you're only supposed to put, number, uh, post, put carry, uh, numbers in there. So. I hurried a bit, so we have a chance for the Raki. Are there any questions? So, uh, I have one. Maybe the automated parking enforcement. Uh, it's a silly one, but the automated parking enforcement system with the car that drives around. Uh, what happens if your parking expires? You get like a minute after that and you get the car, but before you get in the car, the other car passes by and you don't pay, but it still recognized you. Sorry, again? OK, so you paid for one hour, let's say, of parking. Yeah. And your hour expires, but you're one minute late into the, uh, for the car. It gives you 15 or 20 minutes extra. OK. Just like buy a parking ticket for five minutes, it's good for 25. All right. There's tolerances in there. 
So uh, all of those automated parking control system are not as sharp as a nerd would think. Like all of those algorithms are not as sharp as a nerd would think. Uh, Zos gave a talk earlier where he uh, gave a shout out to me. Uh, you'll possibly can uh, tell that everything that you have in those automated stuff is rather a bit more fuzzy when it comes to try to solutions because if you try to make hard rules, nothing works anymore. There's another question. Why do you use yellow background if you know the answer? Um, that's funny. In the Netherlands, the number plates define what it is. It's either yellow or blue. Uh, blue is commercial cabs and transport vehicles, buses, cabs, and stuff like that. And they actually define the RAL tone of the number plate in the law, which is kind of important because by law, it's not allowed to fuck around with those number plates. Just if you want to ever do that in your country, Infrared is colorblind, right? So in the Netherlands, you're only fucking around with a number plate when you use blue or yellow. Same in Germany, we define number plates to be white. So if you take, for example, red and write on that, it's not a number plate anymore. Side note, I skipped that. Um, there is actually the possibility to make invisible number plates for humans. Because it's infrared, right? So it's a spectrum that humans don't see. So if you take an exposed, but a black exposed film, that's like a perfect uh, infrared filter. And if you start writing on a white reflective paper, when you start writing characters on there with just exposed film and then developed, like this old school times, where when you were taking a picture, you actually had a roll of kind of an organic material with some silver oxide on there uh, that you had to develop with chemicals, that stuff is a perfect 100% infrared filter. So if you use this transparent developed film and write characters with that on a reflective surface, a person walking by will not see anything. The computer sees the number plate. So with that, you can actually make number plates that are only visible to computers and not to humans or other way around, because if you cover the rest of this area with intra infrared blocking area, you can make number plates that are only visible for humans, but not for computers. Could you overlay the non-human readable plate to the real plate, so the computer scan the wrong plate? Uh, yes, but that's limitations, because it's really hard to make black, uh, not black, on infrared. So I haven't found a retro-reflective black so far. Garbage bags? No. Garbage bags? Weren't they transparent to infrared and, or what? I don't know, I might try it out. I think garbage bags are uh, transparent to infrared and I mean, they obviously block light to humans. Yes, uh, there is a lot of funny materials out there when it comes to infrared. Um, usually you need to look, they are using different infrared spectrums, but usually what they mean is this, uh, not the near infrared, but the far infrared field, by the way. Is there more questions? So, then uh, I kind of took up the time by talking a bit faster. Um, I hope you enjoyed the talk and now find yourself in the Rack Leaks and uh, thank you for joining the talk.